Uh, yeah, at a debate this past week, you were asked about, um, it's been talked about that you owned a gun, uh, and that's lawful, um, but you were, you, were, you were asked about how you disposed of that gun. Uh, you said you disposed of it through NYPD regulations, um, but you didn't say exactly how you disposed of it. This newspaper, The Villager, contacted the NYPD and they said you still had an active gun permit. And you also said that you had a gun to protect an English as a second language school on Park Avenue. And so, and the Department of Homeland Security authorized you to do that. Uh, I just want to finally set the record straight and figure out how you disposed of it. And uh, did the Department of Homeland Security authorize you to have that gun and require you to have it for your school? Uh, so this is something that my opponent uh, continues to ask. He knows that I do not have a firearm. I don't know that. Uh, and uh, I've answered and asked and answered that question repeatedly by him and his surrogates. Um, and it's especially unfortunate that something... Let's, let's, let's let the candidates answer the question. It's going to work out a lot better that way. We'll learn a lot more from them. <laughs> I, I do not have a firearm. I do not have a firearm license. What Corey is referring to is when I owned a school, I was basically the school safety officer. And it was my job to hold the license for the firearm that was locked in a lockbox. I was also in, in charge of dealing with people if they came to the front desk. If there was an altercation, I had to interface with the security desk downstairs and have them removed. It was my responsibility to do all of that. When I sold the school and the license was transferred, um, the, the gun was turned in to the NYPD in accordance with NYPD policies and practices. What it means to me is that Corey doesn't understand the basic concepts of gun safety because the issue in terms of locating, identifying, and turning in guns are de deals with unlicensed guns. And uh, the issue is very important. This is a very important issue. It means a lot to me. And it's unfortunate that my opponent continues to try to use this as a gotcha politics hit. And it's despicable. It's despicable. Gun control is a very important issue. I've worked for many years to work to reduce gun violence. I've been endorsed by people like Jackie Rowe Adams up in Harlem, who's been on the front lines of fighting for gun safety. I've been endorsed by Senator Eric Adams, who's working on a st state level to control gun safety. And we've worked together on a four-point plan to address gun safety. First of all, to work to ban all assault weapons, period, without question. What about Homeland Security? Second of all, to take the local laws in New York City, which are some of the most stringent, most effective uh, uh, gun licensing laws, and amplify them to a state level, and then bring that to a national level. The third thing is to deal with mental health issues, which are to taboo but have to be addressed. And the fourth thing is to work with local communities, local law enforcement, students, teachers, and parents to come up with emergency preparedness plans. And I'll continue to work on those issues in city council. And this should be what we're talking about when we talk about gun control and gun safety. And shame on people trying to make this an issue for political partisanship. Yeah. Yeah, but you, you now ask uh, Corey a question. Yeah, because one second. You, Corey did mention the, uh, were you some way licensed with the Department of Homeland Security to have the gun? No, it's New York City Police Department that does the licensure. <laughs> okay, you ready, Corey? Yes. Okay. Uh, Corey, your campaign has employed an unfortunate strategy of attacking me personally. Even <laughs> like, like this. Even calling me names because I pointed out a fact that you worked as the director of government affairs for GFI, a development company. This is a big billion dollar company. They have been sued for discrimination by President Obama's Justice Department. You claim you are not ashamed of this job, but if so, why did you ask the Gay Center to remove your work bio from their web website just a few weeks ago? First of all, the premise of your question is completely off. I have never attacked you, Yetta, not once. And I continue to say that we should run a positive campaign uh, based on the issues that matter in the community. And you have unfortunately uh, taken a job that I had and used that to distort who I am and what I've stood for. I've had a varied work history. I've worked on progressive political campaigns. I worked at the Democratic National Committee. I worked at the Retail Department Store Workers Union. I worked at the Gay Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. And I did work at GFI. And I've talked about that uh, publicly and what I've done there. Uh, again, 
Uh, you continue to say that I'm a real estate developer, I'm tied to real estate interests. It is simply not true. I make $52,000 a year. I live in a 300 square foot studio apartment. I grew up in public housing. Uh, my father was a truck driver, a teamster. So you can continue to try to mischaracterize who I am and where I come from. It's, it's not uh, accurate. The piece that you are referring to uh, was done by a uh, blog, City Council Watch, which continues to say untrue things uh, about me. Uh, there was something uh, on a website that was outdated about my work history, and I said that it wasn't a current version of where I work. That is the honest answer. But why did you go out of your way to ask the big center? We're going to move on.